Hello again. Um, what I was going to talk about here real brief, because if you need more information, you'll come next Tuesday in here. We're going to talk about water conservation. Um, water is going to become more important than oil in the future. Basically, they're looking at that future wars will probably be fought over potable water, drinkable water, right? Fresh water. Because less than 2% of the water on the earth is fresh water, and only 1% of that is available actually as drinking water of all the water that's on the earth, okay? This shows us how much water usage and where that water usage is going in their home. So showers and baths representing 35%. Toilet flushing is representing 30% of our water usage. So we're flushing drinkable water down our toilets at a volume in a toilet. In an old toilet, we're flushing 18 liters per flush. Okay. New building code requires that you use a six liter toilet per flush, okay? But if you have an older home or you're gonna have an old toilet, that's probably at 18 liters. One of the grant availabilities is a grant to help pay the cost of that replacement of that toilet, okay? Because if you move from an 18 liter down to a six liter toilet, you're saving 60,000 liters annually, okay? If you're on city water, municipal water, you're getting charged that. If you're on a well, you're paying for electricity to pump that water, to flush down your drain, okay? So we recommend that you change out that toilet. In the family of four, or in a leaking toilet as well, we can have different technologies where we have a leaking toilet, the flapper's leaking, okay? You all know the flapper. We can lose 200,000 gallons in a year, or uh, liters, excuse me. So you need to look at this. Um, Basically, what are our other options in regards to doing that toilet flushing as opposed to using that municipal water, okay? One option is to use gray water harvesting. So gray water harvesting allows you to take water from your bathtub, from your bathroom lav, your bathroom sink, okay, your laundry machine, and we're gonna use that twice. The building code was amended in 2007 to allow you to capture that water and use it for flushing your toilet or use it for irrigation okay how much water are you guys how much are you using as an individual to water your plants water your lawn each year you're paying both supply costs on that and disposal costs on that by utilizing gray water cost gray water harvesting okay we can collect upwards of 65% of that water usage and use it twice. Okay. The other option, of course, is to do rainwater harvesting. Okay. What we do is we capture the rain that comes off our roof, we put it in a storage system, okay? This is something we moved away from as a society. If you go into an old farmhouse, it has a cistern. They, use, they captured the rainwater and use that rainwater on a regular basis. As a society, we moved away from that. We can move back towards that. Products such as the rainwater hog there is a modular system. It allows you to put it under a deck. If you're just using it for irrigation purposes, you're draining it, right, in the fall. You're, getting, right, you're draining out those tanks. You can build up your system. There's other systems on the market. Um, the rainwater pillow which is a big fabric cloth pillow that's 10 feet by 10 feet, holds 1,000 gallons of rainwater, okay? You use this for watering your plants, your trees, your lawns, your cars. You can tie it in as a non-potable water source as well to do that toilet flushing and save that money, okay? It's technology that's available. It's technology, a lot of rainwater stuff comes from Australia where they have water problems already. They capture 100% of their rainwater.